Now for this week's Olympic feature. At last year's Artistic Gymnastics World Championships in California, Svetlana Korkina re-established herself as the queen of her sport. With gold in the all-around, she became the first gymnast in history to win the championship's most prestigious title three times. Many had considered the Russian to be past her best after a disappointing performance at the previous Worlds, but Korkina silenced her critics with a dazzling display. It's hard to put into words what it felt like to win the third World Championship title. It was just amazing, and I was so happy. It was a competition that was really important for me to win, and victory in America's backyard made it all the sweeter. The 25-year-old is the only woman to have a gymnastics move named after her in each discipline. Since 1993, Svetlana has won almost every title in the sport. I try not to pay too much attention when people talk about me being one of the greatest gymnasts of all time, because if I did, then I feel that I would lose my motivation to achieve even more in the sport. If I am successful in an event, I'm usually really happy for a week or so. When it's a big competition, the buzz I get is amazing. But once that feeling has passed, I know that I have to get down to some hard training again. At the Sydney Olympics, Korkina successfully defended her uneven bars title, a discipline she's dominated throughout her career. However, the one gaping hole in her extensive resume is the all-around Olympic crown. In 2000, she went into the competition as one of the favourites and led after the opening round, but her medal hopes dissolved on the vault. But the fall was not her fault. The horse had been set five centimetres lower than it should have been, a crucial difference in such a precise discipline. It didn't matter that she was given the opportunity to retake her vault at the end of the competition. She had injured her knee in the fall and her confidence was shattered. I don't think about Sydney at all. I still have nice memories of the country and its culture. It's a beautiful place. But I don't like to dwell on the past. Anyway, my golden two silvers in Sydney were good enough. One of the most famous faces in her homeland, Svetlana was amongst the Russian sports stars honoured recently at an Olympic dinner in Moscow. At 25, she's now almost a decade older than most of her rivals. In a sport where you're often considered over the hill at 18, she's the self-confessed babushka, or grandmother. The Olympics in Athens will almost certainly be her last major competition before retiring, but typically Sveta's not giving anything away. I can't say at the moment whether it will be my last competition. Everything is possible. It may be my last Olympics, but I still may go on to compete in some Grand Prix competitions. It's something I'll make a decision on after the Olympics. In any case, don't worry, I'll let you know. If Sveta claims the uneven bars title in Athens, she'll become the first gymnast since Larisa Latinina in 1964 to win gold in the same event at three consecutive Olympic Games. But it's that elusive all-around gold which would be the crowning glory for a career which almost never happened. Korkina was originally thought too tall to be a gymnast, but her longtime coach Boris Pilkin developed special training methods for her 5 foot 5 inch frame. Throughout her career, Korkina has constantly challenged the limits. She has a do or die approach, always performing moves of extreme difficulty and forever changing her routines and adding original elements. Her success has seen her collect a whole host of awards, including European Athlete of the Year in 2001. I'm aware there's a lot of attention on me. It's part and parcel of being a celebrity. I don't mind it. It's become part of my everyday life. It's unavoidable if you're a sports star, singer or actor. Korkina's life outside gymnastics has attracted a huge amount of publicity. 
She's posed for Playboy magazine, hosted her own TV show, performed in the theatre and is now looking to break into the movies. She made her stage debut in 2002, playing the lead in a Moscow performance of Henry Miller's play Venus. Based on the passionate love affair that the American writer had with a young actress, it was a racy role appropriate for Corkina, whose love interests are a perennial subject for Moscow gossip columnists. In a sport full of solemn, characterless athletes, Corkina has a personality that demands attention. She's a woman in a sport populated by girls. It's nice to be considered sexy. When I hear that, I feel like a woman. I like to look good because it makes me feel good. But the most important thing is my athletic form. Anyway, when I'm competing, I know that I don't look as bad as I do first thing in the morning. Svetlana Korkina has left her mark on the world of gymnastics over the past 10 years. If Athens is to be her swan song, the sport will be much the poorer without her. The Olympics are going to be so special for me, as they will be for all the other athletes. I don't know how I'm going to perform in Athens or how I'm going to feel when I'm there. I'm not thinking about any of my competitors. The important thing is to focus on myself, on what I'm going to do. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens. Goodbye. Thank you very much. See you in Athens.